About a week ago, I made a video regarding the only optimizations you need for a new Windows 10 or 11 installation, and this is the part two. Now, the reason for this series is because I tend to see a lot of tutorials on YouTube that suggest that you download some sketchy third party application that can do who knows to your computer. So this series consists of the only optimizations you will ever need. The first optimization is configuring your startup services. Click Windows plus R. Then type services.msc, click OK, and then you will see a application or software named services come up. Now this is actually built into Windows and this allows you to see all services. So this will show a lot more than your task manager will, which shows startup applications. This shows every single service that can either start up at the very beginning of your windows or it can be manually open. But the reason why you want to focus on this is because as you can see here, you have a lot of automatic startup types, which basically means that as soon as you boot into your windows, all of these will boot on their own. So if you look down here, you can see that there are a lot of ones that I personally disabled, like easy anti-cheat, also have the Oculus VR runtime service. And if you actually look into your task manager, you can see what applications you don't need and then come into services and just disable them one by one. So there are a lot of ones here that you can simply disable because they could be definitely tanking your system's performance or it could be the reason why your PC is taking longer to boot. So you can see here, I have things like Xbox Live networking service. This is set to manual, which is good because manual means that a application has to actually start that service for it to be there. So if you wanna do that, simply right click and click stop, or you can go to properties and then you can set the startup type to disabled or manual. Disabled will mean that it won't run at all, even if the application tries to run it. And then manual means that a application can run it, but it will not start at the very beginning of your boot. And then automatic, of course, means that as soon as you boot up your system, the service will start. Now, the next optimization is enabling or disabling high precision event timer. Now, the way you wanna do this is you want to right click on the Windows icon, go to device manager, and then you wanna go all the way down until you find system devices. Scroll until you find high precision event timer right here. Now what this does is apparently this just helps with the timing of applications. Some applications are very sensitive when it comes to timing. So maybe an application needs to be started at a certain specific time. And this is here to make sure that that happens correctly. Now, the only issue is apparently for some people or on some systems or on some games, this can actually cause lag and this is actually not needed. So you can actually disable this if you need it and if it works for you. Now, in my opinion, I have been playing pretty much all of my games with high precision event timer enabled and on my system. So it hasn't caused any issues for me. But if you have a issue in one specific game like Fortnite or some online esports game, you can try disabling this. But if this does not work on your specific game, meaning that your game doesn't gain any performance from disabling this, make sure to enable it back because this can definitely be important if you have it enabled. And to be honest, you might run into issues in the long run having this disabled. Maybe some applications will have issues working correctly because this is enabled. So the next fix is disabling or enabling Windows animations. So all you wanna do is click Windows plus R once again, type in sysdm.cpl, click OK. Then you wanna to go to advanced and then go to performance settings. Now, once you get here, this is pretty much it. You will see numerous settings here that you can enable or disable. For me, you can see that my PC is good enough to have pretty much all of these except for two. I would say that unless you are some big competitive person, you should just keep all of these enabled. My performance is just fine with these enabled, but if you care about the little small things, then this could potentially go a long way with giving you some better latency or maybe giving you that one or two FPS that might matter to you. So you can go to adjust for best appearance or you can go to adjust for best performance or you can go to custom and just enable or disable these however you want. I personally don't know about any of these specifically, but you can 
set this up to how you want it to look or you can set this up to how you want it to perform. So this is completely up to you. I personally would just keep it the way that Windows sets it up. But again, if you feel that disabling these can give you a better experience in your games, then this is one of those ways to do that. Now the last optimization for this video is simply configuring your GPU software. Now I personally have an AMD GPU so I can't help you guys with anything on the side of Nvidia but there are plenty of helpful videos that can help you set up the Nvidia control panel and find all of the good settings but I can help you if you are using an AMD GPU. So you can just see here I'll scroll through them real quick just for the miscellaneous ones but I do have two that I want to speak on and that is Radeon anti-lag and then we also have the Radeon enhanced sync now all these other ones like image sharpening you can use like the name says it can sharpen any game that you're playing but then ones like Radeon chill and Radeon boost really just can cause more issues not performance wise but it will cause more issues looks wise especially Radeon Boost but let's talk about the important ones Radeon Enhanced Sync I already made a video on it it is really good it helps in most games it helps you avoid v-sync and it reduces visual tearing and lag and it is way better than v-sync because v-sync can of course cause stuttering and lower performance while enhanced sync is literally built into your gpu's driver and with it enabled you can remove screen tearing and it could potentially reduce lag now you also have radeon anti-lag now i did see somebody in the comments of that video saying that the reason why they don't like enhance enhanced sync is because it gives a little bit of input latency apparently so if that is true then you can also turn on radio and anti-lag i'm not personally very picky about input lag i rarely have issues with input lag but that's probably because i honestly don't care about input lag at all but if input lag happens to get bad on a game this could definitely help so these two should be set enabled and then the rest of these you can just look and see what i have them set at and this doesn't just stop here if you are the type of person to overclock your gpu then you could definitely do that but i personally don't really care to overclock my gpu because at least with the radeon software it never actually saves my overclocks so i just gave up with it i'm not sure if the performance really changes much whenever you have a overclock but that is something i can make a video on in the future 